There's a lot of options out there when it comes to tools and it can be extremely overwhelming when you're just starting out getting into DIYing or woodworking and trying to figure out what is most worth your money to invest in first. I definitely struggled with this when I first started, but after doing a couple of projects and also learning a lot from woodworkers I know that have a lot of experience to share, I've compiled what I think is a pretty good list for a beginner that's just starting out. Hi, my name is Elena, welcome to my channel, and today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 tools I would invest in first as a beginner woodworker or DIYer. The first five tools on this list will be really basic hand tools that I think anyone could benefit from having in their workshop or their home. The next five will be power tools that are a little more spendy but 100% worth it to invest in and are still on the more affordable side of power tools. And with that, let's get into it. First on the list is gonna be clamps. The reason these are first on the list is because I use them basically in every single project. They come in so much handy, not only for safety reasons, but also just to have your hands free and also to keep things stable while you're working on them so that your piece doesn't shift in the middle of you cutting or doing something like that. There's a ton of different types of clamps out there and what I would recommend is just buying them as you do projects and you need them. I started out with just these pretty simple quick release clamps and recently I invested in some larger bar clamps and I'm sure my collection will continue to expand and grow as I work on more projects and have more need of them. Some basic measuring and layout tools that I think any beginner can benefit from is of course a measuring tape. I actually have a few because I keep misplacing them and it's always nice to have a backup handy. Also I'd recommend getting a square ruler and a combination square. These are necessary for checking to make sure your cuts are straight and your pieces of wood are square themselves. To check to make sure that your square is truly square, line it up on a straight edge, draw a line on one side, and then flip it over and draw another line on the same spot. If those lines do not match up then your tool is not actually square and it's time to invest in a newer one. Another tool I would definitely recommend getting is some sort of a handsaw. Now, there's a lot of different handsaws out there and everyone has different preferences and depending on what project you're working on or how you work, you might wanna go one way or the other. I like to personally recommend a two-sided Japanese handsaw. I just personally like working with it more. I find it easy to use and also you can get a pretty high quality one for a cheaper price than you could get a high quality Western handsaw. And it's typically easier to get more comfortable with as a beginner. Another difference between the two is Japanese handsaws cut on the pull stroke while Western handsaws cut on the push stroke. Next up, I would definitely recommend getting a hammer and a rubber mallet of some sort. Now, I don't think I have to dive too deep into why you need a hammer. It's a pretty basic tool that I think anybody should have, but I would still recommend, in addition to the hammer, also getting a softer or rubber style um, mallet. A mallet is more than just a comically large, soft hammer. It's super helpful if you want to, you know, tap some wood to nudge it into place or, you know, get something to align correctly. Because it has a larger surface area made of a softer material, it won't damage the wood like a traditional metal hammer would. When I used to work in the workshop with my dad growing up, he would use his mallet all the time and he would call it his persuader, which I thought was pretty funny at the time, but honestly is an accurate description of how it works. The last thing on my list, but definitely not least, is PPE, which stands for Personal Protective Equipment. There's a lot of potential safety hazards when you're working in a workshop and it's really important to use PPE when both working with hand tools and power tools. Every woodworker or DIYer should have some form of eye protection, hearing protection, and a good mask or respirator. I personally wear my protective eyewear if there's even a slight chance of something getting in my eye because it's really just not worth it. If it's on the loud side, I'll also just wear my hearing protection. If there's a lot of sawdust or fumes, then I also wear a respirator as it's really dangerous to inhale those chemicals and sawdust is also really dangerous to inhale in large quantities. And sometimes I'm wearing all three. I'm wearing my eyeglasses, my hearing protection, and then also my mask or respirator. Just a quick side note on safety. Before you do anything with a new tool, I would definitely recommend reading the safety guidelines that come with your tool and just in general, getting familiar with the general safety procedures in a shop. 
There's a lot of content out there that goes over the basics of safety in a workshop, and I will link a couple videos that I've referenced in the past in my description below. Now, power tools, let's get into it. Anyone who's getting into woodworking, DIYing, or is just a homeowner should definitely prioritize getting a power drill. This is the one that I use. Often drills and drivers are sold in kits and so you can get them together and they work really well together. The difference between a drill and a driver is the drill is made more for boring holes and the driver has a lot of power and speed, which just basically means that it's better at screwing screws in than the drill will be. To be honest, I was really comfortable using my drill for a while so I wasn't using the impact driver, but I'm starting to get more comfortable with it and so many woodworkers and hobbyists really swear by the impact driver for just being really efficient at driving those screws in. This also goes for all of the power tools, but there's many brands out there and honestly, a lot of them do the job really, really well. So I would just recommend doing your own research to find the best tool and brand that's gonna fit your price point and does what you want and feels good. One thing you might just wanna consider is the fact that if you do cordless, which I would really recommend, it just makes life so much easier then you might want to stick with the same brand across all of your tools. Mostly so that you can just charge a couple batteries and they'll work for all your tools and you can swap between them. It just makes it a little more convenient. I definitely like that aspect of all my tools being the same brand. But at the same time, I wouldn't let that limit you if you have one brand and all your other tools but you just heard really, really good things of a specific tool in another brand, then go ahead and get that. Honestly, the experience you have when using the tool is gonna be way more important than brand consistency. I'm definitely open to other brands in the future. It's just honestly easier with the batteries for now. <laughs> Next up, I would recommend the circular saw. This is the one that I have. It is a six and a half inch circular saw. They come in all types of sizes and of course in many, many brands. So again, I would just do research and figure out what brand is gonna work for you and also what size. And that'll really depend on the types of projects you wanna work on and the thickness of the wood you're cutting. I would definitely recommend going cordless on the circular saw. A circular saw is gonna be key for making really basic projects and is great at ripping really large boards. It won't be a super clean cut, but it'll definitely just cut it down to a size you can manage. Next up, we have a jigsaw. It's honestly one of my favorite tools to use. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about them, but I love it. It's just such a flexible tool for cutting curbs and getting into small spaces. You can swap out the blades depending on what you're cutting and adjust other settings like speed to suit your project. Just don't do what I did a couple months ago, which was try to pull out the blade before it had cooled down after using it to cut some wood. The blade gets really hot. I mean, this goes for a lot of tools that have these interchangeable blades. Blades get really hot from all the cutting and I just wasn't thinking and I grabbed it with my forefinger and thumb and got a really minor burn. Um, luckily healed within the week, but not so fun. So either use gloves to take out the jigsaw blade or just really wait until it's fully cooled down. And before you swap out the blade, I would take the battery out because you don't wanna accidentally trigger it while you're switching the blade. Just better safe than sorry. Between a circular saw and a jigsaw and also some patience and some jigs or straight edges that you can easily create, you can get a pretty decent cut with these tools, but it just won't be as precise as it would be with a bandsaw or a table saw. Don't get me wrong, I definitely want a bandsaw and table saw someday, but I, like many beginner woodworkers, just don't have the money and space to invest in those larger, more expensive tools right now. And so between a circular saw and a jigsaw, I can get most work done. So these smaller and significantly less expensive tools will have to do for now. While hand sanding is always an option, it takes a really long time. And if you're working on lots of projects or really trying to get into this as a hobby, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a random orbital sander. The sander is named such because it rotates in a circular pattern that has really varying or you know random orbits so that the piece of wood that you're working on doesn't have scratch and scuff marks on it and it just creates a smoother and more seamless finish. For anyone getting into woodworking, home projects, or just general DIY projects, I would say this is a pretty necessary tool to have. And lastly, I would definitely recommend a router. 
A router is a very versatile tool that uses sharpened bits that rotate at really, really high speeds to cut joints or shape edges of wood. There's a ton of different bits you can get and there's varying sizes of routers and depending what project you're working on, again, you'll wanna do research to figure out what size of router and what type of router you wanna get. This is actually the only tool on this list that I do not personally own. If I ever need one for a project, currently I drive an hour to borrow one from my dad's workshop, but a router and a table saw are top of my list to get when I have the money to afford them. A router would be a great purchase for any beginner woodworker. Tools in general, but definitely power tools, can be rather expensive, but there's really no shame as a beginner slowly building up your collection and expanding it as you get more money, as you get more experience, and as you get more invested in the hobby of woodworking or DIYing. Just get working on any projects you can with what you have. Honestly, just a couple of tools from this list will already allow you to do a lot of different really cool projects. And as your skills and your experience increase, your tools will slowly build up before you know it, you'll have a full workshop. I also think for myself and for other beginners, it's not a bad idea to get more comfortable with the world of woodworking and working in a shop before you move on to some of the really dangerous and expensive tools like a table saw. I hope you found this helpful. I've linked all of the tools that I personally use and talked about in this video in the description below. If you have any questions or tools that you would recommend a beginner start with, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.